Hey, are you new to user experience? You know, UX, UI, product design, whatever. Are you new to that? Have you started that yet? Have you been there? Have you done that? Have you seen it? Well, if you haven't, there's probably some mistake that you're making. So I'm going to tell you about the top five mistakes that new UX designers make. You ready for this one? All right, let's do it. What up, unicorns? Eric Abram here. You already know the deal. You already know the name. You already seen it in the intro. What we're talking about the top five mistakes new UX designers make. Look, I'm not trying to pick on any of you guys, any of you people, any of you leprechauns, squirrels, and, and, and primates, right? I'm just saying that because you don't know the ins and outs quite yet, you don't know, you're just kind of uncovering, you're just starting. There are going to be some mistakes that you're going to make that is going to cost you. I don't mean cost you in like a negative way, but it will compromise your design. It will compromise your experience because you're not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. So let's actually jump into, I put together like a little slide deck. Um, so I'm just probably just going to read these off to you guys because, you know, I ain't got time to memorize these. <laughs> so I put these together and I wanted to just make something that could help you guys understand what you need to fix. So without further ado, let's get into the first one. So for the first mistake that UX designers make, skipping user research. This is insane. I'm just going to read this. One of the most common mistakes UX designers make is skipping and undervaluing user research. User research is the foundation of UX design, allowing you to understand your target audience, their needs and pain points. Remember that pain points. You got to figure out what those are. Embrace methods like user interviews, surveys and usability testing to gain insights and make a form design decision. Does this make sense to you guys? Did no mistake number one? I would say in my career, um, this is what this is a mistake that I've made. Uh, because like some companies, they don't really value uh, user research all that much. So you skip it. You skip it. Some startups just do it. Some big companies do it. At the end of the day, it comes back to bite you in the butt. All right, let's get back to the schedule. Number two. So mistake number two. Wow. Yeah, this is a big one. Over overcomplicating designs. Time and time again, I see a lot of clutter and overcomplication of design work. Let me just read this to you really quick. New York designers sometimes fall into a trap of overcomplicating their designs. Remember, simplicity is key. Simplicity is key. Avoid clutter interfaces and convoluted interactions. Try for clean, intuitive designs that guide users seamlessly through their journey. Embrace minimalism, prioritize, prioritize content, and focus on creating delightful experiences. Time and time again, whenever I'm doing like a portfolio review, I'm looking over some people at somebody's work. I'm just asking like, what's going on on this page? Like what is happening? It is way too much stuff on this page. Can you like simplify this just a little bit more? Can you make this a step by step thing? Can you take some content out? Can we shrink that? Can we change the language? Can we do something to not have the user feel overwhelmed when they come to this page? All right, let's get to it. Number three. All right, so mistake number three, ignoring user feedback. This is a mistake that could really hurt you in the end, especially if you are a business. If you don't take, I mean, this is, shoot, this could be anything. Feedback is good for everything, whether it's for your, your UX design, whether it's for your personal life, whatever. 
you got to take feedback and you got to take it in stride and you got to take it with no ego, you know, because people are just trying to help you out. Either you apply the feedback or you don't. That's up to you, but you got to be able to accept it. So ignoring user feedback. Let me just read this one real quick. Feedback from users is a gold mine for improvement. Yet new UX designers often overlook it. Embrace feedback as a valuable resource for understanding how users perceive your designs, guys. They are telling you what's wrong with your stuff or they're telling you what's really good with your stuff. Like listening to them because you're making it for those users. All right, let's get back to it. Actively seek user feedback, the usability testing, surveys, and feedback forms. Incorporate user insights to iterate and refine your designs continuously. I, I, this is, this is the one thing that most companies, I think they do this. I think most companies do this. They might, they might skip the user research in the, in the front end, but once they launch the product and they realize it's a, it's a Quibi, they realize like, Oh, we should listen to those particular users or we need to understand why our product is this, this, and this. So let's actually now talk to those people we should have talked to in the first place. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. Man. Number four. What's up, unicorns? Are you ready to take the next step in your UX design career? Well, look no further. I introduce to you Springboard. Springboard is offering an introduction to UI UX course right now for $99. Dollars, Yes, get ready to transform your career, take the next step on your UX journey. In just four weeks, part-time, you'll immerse yourself in the world of UI UX, if I like to call it, just user experience. You'll be learning the tools and techniques used by top designers like myself. And the best part is, you'll have four one-on-one -on -one meetings with your UX mentor, plus a career coaching session. Hey, put your skills into action, guys. This course is designed to provide you with real world experience. You work on end-to-end -end design projects, build your portfolio, and also gain valuable practical knowledge using industry standard tools like Sketch and Figma. Personally, I like Figma. But wait, there's more. So this course was originally $349, but for a limited time only, they have lowered it to $99. But because you are an Ugly Unicorn subscriber, an Ugly Unicorns follower and listener, you will get an additional $10 off when you use the link in the description below or even scan the QR code. You will get the $10 off, bringing the course down to just what? $89. Yes, $89 at $10 savings. You guys are welcome. So, are you ready to embark on this UX journey? Click the link below or scan the QR code to get started. I look forward to seeing you guys in the course. Number four. So, the fourth mistake that new UX designers make is neglecting collaboration. I said this in a former video that collaboration skills, you need to have those. You need to be able to work cross-functionally. Go watch that video. Yeah, I, I said this, but I'm going to reiterate this. All right. This is because it's a big one. But let me just read this to you. UX design is a collaborative field and new designers sometimes fall into a trap of working in isolation. Yes, we do. We often do work in isolation and work in silos and different things like that. They call them silos, but isolation is it sounds a little more scary, right? They do work in silos and what happens is it, you could you could hit inconsistencies in your applications, especially if you're building multiple applications that leverage something that everybody's using, but nobody's talking to each other and they're duplicating efforts and they're duplicating work. What is the point of recreating the wheel if somebody over there has already made it? Just saying. Let me get back to this. Remember, collaboration enhances creativity and leads to stronger outcomes. Engage with stakeholders, developers, and other designers to gather different perspectives. Did you guys hear me? To gather different perspectives. Yes. 
<laughs> you need to do that. All right. And create holistic solutions. Collaborative approaches often reserve, reserved, res, reserved, <laughs> result in more innovative and user centric designs. I said it before, I'll say it again. You need to be able to work with your PM, your marketing team, your business leaders, your freaking uh, ADA compliance people, your legal people, your brand people. I'm not saying you have to include everybody, but sometimes you might have to, and you'd be able to build those relationships, build those bridges, make those connections so you can go out and leverage what you need to leverage to get your designs done approved and delivered they also mentioned that you need to work with people yeah i think i keep you you get the point all right last one on the list then i'm gonna let you go and have a good day number five number five this is huge this might be number two on the collaboration for me let's take number five that new UX designers make is, we're all guilty of this, not considering business goals. We are hyper-focused on what the user wants, on what the user is saying, and what the user is doing, that sometimes we lose sight of the business goals and reason why we're making this product. And how the business is going to make money because if you don't make money i said this in lots of videos if your company does not make money you do not have a job period that is not a guess that is not a that is not a hypothesis if you don't make if the business doesn't make money they can't pay you they gotta let you go just saying but let me read this let me get back to this while focusing on user needs is critical, like I said before, new UX designers sometimes forget and consider the business goals of the product and or, or organization they are designing for. Understanding the business objectives helps align your designs with the larger strategy. This is the, the larger strategy is that North Star that all the teams are using. And all the teams are trying to reach. You might have different goals. You might have different paths. But there's their one star that everybody's trying to get to. And they call that the North Star. All right. Let me get back. <laughs> let me get back into that. Because you guys know I go off on tangents. Anyways. Find the right balance between user needs and business goals to create solutions that are both friendly, that are both user friendly and aligned with the organization's objectives. Yes, 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 and yes. So guys, those are the five mistakes that new X designers make. Are you still making these mistakes? Even if you're, even if you've been in the game for a while, are you making these mistakes? Have you course corrected and self corrected to remedy these? And if you haven't in your new to user experience, go back and rewatch this video to understand or take notes while you're watching the video to understand, oh, I don't need to do these five things. Granted, there are probably hundreds of mistakes that you can make, but I'm not gonna nitpick. I'm not gonna get into this video and be super detailed on everything because the video would be six days long. <laughs> we, I'm able to do a live stream at that point. But just remember that it's okay if you do make mistakes. At the end of the day, it's fine if you make mistakes. Do you just need to own up to those mistakes and say like, yes, I messed up. Yes, I will try to fix it. Yes, I'm gonna learn from it. Yes, I'm gonna grow from it. Cause you have to make mistakes in order to learn at the end of the day, because that's how you get better. And nobody's gonna get super mad at you if you make a mistake. But if you keep making mistakes, they might get rid of you. So <laughs> that's, that's a totally different conversation. <laughs> so <laughs> just saying, it's fine to make mistakes, but it's not okay to consistently make mistakes, right? You gotta be able to like, correct yourself and you know come back and really actually learn from those things so 
If you guys like this video, make sure you like. I'm not even gonna ask you to subscribe because half of y'all ain't subscribed. And actually, like 86% of y'all ain't, ain't, ain't subscribed anyway. So just like the video, man. It don't cost you nothing. I mean, I ain't asking you for no money, but just like the video, man. It really helps out in the algorithm. It really helps out, uh, you know, smaller creators like myself. Hit that algorithm, please. Let it pop, let it pop. Anyways, guys, like I always say, just like the video for this one. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta subscribe. I don't really care if you do subscribe, because it doesn't really matter. All right. <laughs> Don't subscribe, just like. But anyways, guys, like I always say, you like that? Y'all like that? No, I don't like that either. <laughs> like I always say, don't just be a unicorn, be an ugly unicorn, please. Bro, I've been having way too much fun. <laughs> I've been having way too much fun with this shit, man. And it don't. This this is fun, man. This YouTube stuff is fun, man. I love I love making these videos. Uh, how do, wait, how do I cut this off? All right.